we are going to do this old school style. Yeah. Uh, our producer has family in town. That's what I understand. And so we're just going to straight shot this all the way through. No editing. Um, and, and we'll see how it goes. How do you, how does that sound? Um, does that mean we can swear? If you insist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some so, people have complained about the lack of swears. Yeah. Which I mean, I don't know. I, I almost, whatever. It, here's the thing. This is how I view it. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people who don't want swears. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can lose those people if there's a lot of swears. Um, the people who won't listen because there aren't swears are it's, it's zero, right? Nobody's like the show would, I would listen to this, but there's no swears. I, I don't think that those people exist. I don't know. I know. Well, plus with the bleeping, it's kind of a choose your own adventure. You get to, <laughs> <laughs> we should just tell him to like bleep random words. Just like not bleep like, Words that aren't swears. Right. Maybe it make us sound tougher too. Right. <laughs> or dirtier. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here's the deal. Like the show recently has been us trying to decide which, uh, which death we want to talk about or <laughs> uh, what depressing element of, of this administration uh, should we focus on? We wanted to have one show a year that is positive stuff. You know, it's sad that it There's can nothing to talk about. only be one show a year. <laughs> we don't have enough material for multiple, you know, right. positive shows. It's probably not true, but. Well, pro- yeah. I mean. Good things the, happen this, all the time. Good things do happen all the time. And this is why I we mean, don't need a producer this, this week, because we have nothing to swear about. It's going to be a short show too. So, so here's the deal. Like, um, yeah, I love getting the mail normally, although sometimes we get <laughs> RFEs or denials, but normally I can hear from my office, the, the beeping of the, po- the uh, mailman scanning the uh, priority mail. And those are almost always uh, green cards and work permits. Right. Mm-hmm. So well, I'm uh, in my office slaving away on Twitter and I hear the little beep beep of the the postman. Why am I calling him a postman? He's a mailman. Or is he, uh, a, is he a mail carrier? Well, he it could be a female carrier too. It's no, just, no, mail, as in. Right, I know. Yeah, oh, I, I got it. That was a joke. Anyhow. So if we had a producer, <laughs> they could have, he could have put in a rim shot there, so everyone would know that was a joke. If we had a producer, he would have just taken <laughs> pretty much. Everything we've done so far is straight out to the trash. Drag that to the trash. Anyways, the point is, every day uh, I hear that little bleep bleep uh, beep beep uh, from the mailman or the mail person, and that means that something good has happened I- in general, right? Mm-hmm. So we need to, you know, focus on that stuff a little bit once in a while. Yes, yes. Don't you agree? I agree. I agree. So do you want to? So I've received. We received some feedback. From people, mm-hmm. right? You, um, I'll 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 tell one, and then you can tell one. And okay, um, do it. This is back and forth. It yeah, completely random because I just I I pulled some of these up here, and let's see. Um, here's one from Luca. Fagundes. See, I'm going to say his name wrong. I probably shouldn't have. I should, probably should have picked like Erica McPhee, who I know I can say. Oh, but man. Luca, he's you from he's from wrong. Wisconsin. Yeah. He's he's Brazil, Brazilian. Super nice guy. Great attorney up there in Wisconsin. So he sent me an email. He said, client is a 62-year-old Mexican national who entered without inspection in 98, later gets married to and has four U.S. citizen kids. He has a drinking problem for a bit. Wife leaves him. 2007, he gets really sick. He's a roofer. He lives alone. Doesn't take good care of himself. Super sick. Goes to the hospital. After a bunch of tests, he has full-blown AIDS. Not just HIV, but full-blown AIDS. Yes, our positive story includes people who have AIDS. 
Okay. So <laughs> he immediately begins to receive treatment, gets free treatment from the local uh, CDC. He works full time. Otherwise, you really can't tell he's sick. So now he's put into removal proceedings in 2015 after a yet another uh, DUI. So kids are all grown, so they don't have the cancellation of removal, meaning that uh, he's been here for 10 years and someone would suffer extreme unusual hardship. So uh, Luca files a 589, and this is 12 years. Okay, so just I just want to yeah. be clear. This is the this is the positive and uplifting story show, and so far we have well, a most uh, positive and, op- and uplifting suffering. stories have a sad background. A man suffering from AIDS who's been placed in removal proceedings. Right. After. So Luca files a, a 589, an asylum application with him, 12 years after he was diagnosed with AIDS. Now, normally we have to file asylum applications within one year of entry, or if there have been changed circumstances shortly thereafter that. So Luca does a great job of putting everything together. He walks in, and the trial attorney, who he said he's never met, offers them withholding of removal. Um, And withholding the removal means that he'll be allowed to stay here. He'll get a work permit. He doesn't have to worry about um, being deported. So, you know, that's a kind of like the best outcome, unfortunately, in our system that we have that this guy can, can get. But, you know, so a lot of our, positive stories are obviously going to have sad backgrounds. Um, right. But here, now, the trial attorney, and this just happened a few months ago, okay? So the trial attorney right. could have fought this and probably would have won, right? Um, saying, hey, you know, you know, all the, all the information, blah, blah, blah about wherever this guy's Mexican, he can go back. He's not going to get persecuted. He probably would have won that case. That was not a, just so people are clear, that was not a paraphrase (laughs) of uh, of what (laughs) the Office of the Chief Counsel normally puts forward in in removal proceedings. Blah, blah, blah. (laughs) That's the kind of go-to. It's kind of their go-to. And so, you know, and I'm sure Luca did a great job of putting everything to together. So it which really helps, but you know, it's, it's a, I think it's a nice story. Um, you know, this guy still has obviously very grave challenges is ahead of him, but being deported is not one of them. So all that pressure can be lifted from his shoulders and, and hopefully that will give him some, some ease in his life and will, so he can better address some of these issues that he's facing. Right. All right. So that's a good one. Uh, shout out to uh, the client and, and chief counsel, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I've got a, a listener email. I've got two listener emails. So the first one says, uh, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Robbins. I only recently found your podcast <laughs> fail. First of all, um, what, he, I'm a he late recently bloomer. Found it or he found it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a double fail if you think about it. Um, I only okay. So um, uh, I'm a late bloomer with technology. I still handwrite my law school exams. It has been amazing to listen to. I look forward to it now each week, as does my brother, a non-law student. Right now, I'm a 4L graduating in 2020. Uh, The whole reason I got into law school, 4L, uh, does that mean they're doing an extra year? Uh, Like a, what do you call this, an LL? Well, it could be, or at at Temple, where I went to school, they had um, a night school. So Mm -hmm. that would be a four-year program. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, So uh, they're set to graduate we're leaving in the cops, by the way, in the background. That's you. That's a Philly. That's not a Philly cop. cop. Okay. Is that for me or you? Does, no, that's definitely you. Yeah. See? Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, you're right. I had my, I had my head. The whole reason right. I got. Oh, yeah. It's a Philly cop. Definitely. 
The whole reason I got into law school was to be an immigration attorney. I am a little older than most people choosing to do law school, 42, and I'm an only parent of an amazing boy whose father, incidentally, was deported before he was born. But I had for many years done work and volunteer work with both the undocumented community and Afghan refugee community. It is my passion. My undergrad is in ethnic studies, but I focused on the experiences of immigrants. I thought I was going uh, to go into social work, but realized the only way to truly help these communities is as a legal advocate. Shade to social workers everywhere, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, your podcast has been amazing to reaffirm so many parts of this for me. For one, listening to yours and your guests' experience, experiences respectively have been as, uh, aspiring and reaffirming. In addition to your conversations about financial aspects and mental health issues that have been wonderful. I have been paying my tuition as I go uh, so as not to be tied to debt so that I can uh, do what I care about. Of course, working full-time means I do not have straight A's. You addressed this as well in one of your episodes, and it gave me so much relief. Basically, um, I think that was you who said, <laughs> don't focus on school. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, school, in addition, I do fun. worry about well, great, school great is indeed. <laughs> in addition, I do uh, worry about the secondary trauma I will be dealing with. I know that I am prone to having that effect. Uh, that affect me. The Otro Lado episode was wonderful. I shared it with my mother, uh, who is a therapist and does trainings on working with trauma. She loved the episode as well. I do. Uh, that's my email. I'm not editing that out. We don't have a producer today. I do plan on becoming a patron member uh, the next time I get paid. Uh, thank you for providing a community of people that care about the same issues I do. It has been so helpful. So I got to tell you. Um, I most of the time it feels like we're just sort of shouting. So, so you're the void. just so I can recap <laughs> your positive story yeah. is someone sending an email praising you. Well, yeah, <laughs> so I just wanted to point that one out. I didn't hear my name. Uh, no. Well, hold on. I, I'm gonna, well, I can't close my email because I'm reading <laughs> emails. It's okay. You know what? People uh, have to accept this, no, but accept, I mean, look, accept this show for what it is. Okay, You want NPR, okay, go so to look, NPR. Ultimately, I think we kind of started this show and it was like, hey, let's have a little corner of the internet for us and our 10 colleagues uh, to, you know, come on and talk about their firms and what they do. And that was sort of the focus if you go back and listen to the early episodes. And... Trump got elected and we kind of made the decision like we want to try and uh, inform people and and make a difference. And if there's people out there who are um, becoming advocates and listening to the show and being inspired by it and fighting a fight that's hard uh, uh, to participate in. Uh, and if we play some little tiny role in that, then I think that is a good thing. And yeah, it's about me, but um, I it's don't okay. care. You're a good guy. Uh, yeah, so. so um all right we we are on twitter right um our show now has a, a twitter account um and, and me and steven both have uh our twitter accounts um and so you know we there, there's a pretty good sizable um immigration lawyer presence on uh on the Twitter. So I, I put out a little tweet saying, Hey, you know, hit us up if you guys have anything. And someone from the services, immigrant rights and education network, uh, tweeted, sent me a, a private message. And again, I should pick again, I should have picked Erica McPhee because she has an easy name. And this is uh Shohan, uh, Zubin. And, they're tweeting at the handle at Abogado Juanito. So, um, but he, he tweeted at me and he said, despite the attorney general's illegal restrictions on asylum this past year, my tiny NGO has helped over 65 people get asylum or a similar form of permanent relief from removal. I'm very proud of my colleagues and thankful to their practice and to practice in a jurisdiction where this is still possible. 
So this is the Services, Immigrant Rights, and Education Network, which is in uh, the Bay Area in California. So you can look them up. It's um, S-I-R-E-N dash, dot, or dash, I'm sorry, Bay Area uh, dot org, S-I-R-E-N uh, slash Bay Area dot org. They're doing great work. Um, they're helping people out get asylum and other types of uh, protection. They're a very small NGO, but we we deal with that a lot. I, a lot of I think immigration practitioners are <laughs> somewhat small NGOs, and some of them are official and whatnot. Um, we have Matt Cameron who has his small NGO, uh, Golden Staircase, I believe. Um, um, El Otro Lado is a small NGO that's growing and growing, but they're still small. And all these people around, all these little groups are doing such, having such tremendous impact. And, you know, people say, what can we do? How can we help? Um, you know, if you're a lawyer, obviously there are lawyerly things you can do, but also, you know what, you can give a little money and, uh, and it's not, not a bad thing to do. And your money is well used in these organizations. Didn't uh, Adriana say that they got some money after she got uh, a she got a fellowship, last... right? That, uh, she yeah, that's she messages us, right? We should you yeah. should read that one. Well, that's a good one. Um. So, yeah, and that that would also be about us and how we made that happen. So, <laughs> little pat on well, the back. She there. actually um, bothered. She so like, my... she was bugging me for like a while about getting on the show. So, um, yeah, she has something to do oh, with really? making that happen wow. as, as well. She obviously, uh, was bugging the wrong person because you, um, don't actually no, prepare I for don't. the show or, no. or plan it. So maybe she hey, should have called she me. Hmm. Weird. Now she knows. So, um, one thing about this job is, uh, we don't always, we've talked about how uh, practitioners sometimes uh, on Facebook are like, what the hell? My client doesn't worship me. Um, (laughs) You know, I'm doing all this great work and they're not grateful. I I, I I think that happened. It's it's required. (laughs) I'm going to need a Christmas card and a fruit basket. Do you know how many motions to withdraw I have to send out on, uh, on the 26th? (laughs) (laughs) Your honor. My client has violated the terms of our agreement by not all saying. I needed, all um, I needed was a fruit I, basket. That's all. All I needed is to hear that I, it looks like I've been wor- uh, working out and uh, it's in the fee agreement. <laughs> uh, Abogado, have you been uh, working out? All right. I'll waive this month's payment. Anyways, um, <laughs> so a lot of attorneys have this, this feeling. And I think what happens is sometimes, uh, you know, they'll come into the office and we'll be like, well, congratulations, uh, your U visa came. And at least, you know, a good percentage of the time we get sort of deadpan responses and the, the, the celebration, it's not that it's not happening. It just doesn't happen in the lawyer's office, right? They go home and they probably have a little party and they, you know, celebrate with family or friends. And, and it's not for us. <laughs> and another thing that can happen is, you know, you can have a hard fought victory. And and sometimes those those clients come back to say hi or, you know, with uh, uh, referrals that they're making. But not always. I mean, sometimes you just maybe never see them again. And uh, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, I had a client who uh, was detained because uh, her husband had thrown away her dishware that she worked hard to, to buy for herself so she could cater parties and things like that. And he threw it in the garbage and she was mad. So she said, you know what, I'm going to throw this Tupperware at you. And he said, uh, go ahead, do it. And so she did. And he got up and calmly called the police who arrested her and she was then handed over to ice and, and hopefully deported. Yeah. Well, they denied her bond, Thankfully. which was Thankfully. cool. The judge said she was a danger <laughs> to society. <laughs> and, uh, we ended up winning that case cancellation of removal, which you mentioned earlier. And so now she has a green card and, uh, you know, so I, 
with the detained cases, you end up working a lot with the family. And uh, in this case, she had some teenage uh, children. And the son came in a couple of weeks ago. He wanted an appointment. And so we you know, gave him an appointment and came in. Anyways, he just wanted to like catch up and say hi and that things are good. And uh, he's got plans and his sister's got plans and they're all uh, doing really well. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when people are detained for three or four months or longer, um, when they get out, they've got uh, the criminal case. So in this case, she'd, she'd been charged with assault, domestic violence for throwing the Tupperware. So, so now she's got to deal with that. Uh, she's got an immigration lawyer who's uh, who would like to eventually one day get paid. <laughs> and um, she's also, in this case, had custody issues and uh, all of that stuff to sort of sort out and it can be really stressful. And it was nice to hear after a couple of years that, you know, she'd figured all of those little things out and was doing fine. And Has she um, continued her life of crime of <laughs> throwing Tupperware at people <laughs> or did she learn her lesson? Yeah, so, well, I've been reading about a, a, a string of drive-by Tupperware throwings in the area where she lives. And I don't know, I I can't really um, report it because she's my client, but um, yeah, no, you know, so oftentimes in these cancellation cases, uh, we have to go and, and make arguments about how the family would be affected by a removal. And it's just, uh, it's really true. And it's so good to be able to, to see what happens when the judges agree with us and they get to stay and, and work out their their lives, yeah. you know. And it's uh, yeah, it so, was nice. So I, I found that the message from Adriana, who was on our show a couple of weeks ago with um, Bridget uh, Cambria, and she sent us a, a little message saying, "A person called me after listening to the podcast to make an anonymous donation to our separated family project at clinic." enough to support the fellowship of an attorney in central Florida for another year. The fellow has taken several separate family cases in central Florida this year, and we didn't know how we would get funding for the position for next year. So look what we did. Yeah. Look, it's all about me. Okay. <laughs> well, no, I think I, I, I said um, we, I included me and you as opposed to yours, which was very exclusionary. Also accepting um, anonymous uh, donors, my student loan account. <laughs> or or <laughs> as, way, as it's called the Patreon page. <laughs> the Patreon page, exactly. All right. Um, well, yeah, so that's awesome. And, and uh, people should know. I mean, it's nice when one person can come forward and, like, make that happen. But, you know, you can do that with a bunch of people contributing a little bit. So yeah. Uh, so do you get clients who, who will say like, uh, you know, they'll have monthly payments set up and, but they'll say, I, well, I don't want to make any of those little payments. I just want to bring it all in with my tax return. Oh, yeah. and so how about you bring in 20 bucks? Like when you get oh. it. Um, well, it depends know, on when they're saying that. If they're saying that in like <laughs> right. March, and, mm -hmm. you know, you might say, okay, have you gotten your tax return payment yet? And they're like, no, it's coming in soon. And you'd be like, all right. If they're saying that in yeah, June, with then, mm -hmm. you know. But the point is, like, the clients a lot of times will be like, look, I'll bring in all of it at once. And it's like, you haven't made a single payment in two years. How about you just bring in, like, $30 once in a while? That's the point. You don't. You might be sitting at home going, I can't fund an entire lawyer for a whole year. I'm just not going to do anything. No, don't be that guy or girl. Don't be that person. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, do you have another one to share? Let's see here. Let's. This is going to be a great no, podcast. This is a good podcast. A... This is uh, uplifting um, uh, stories. So, well, one, I mean, just to kind of piggyback off what you said about the people getting, like, your client came back um, 
and thank you. But lots of times people just kind of pick up their cards or work permits or their status and they're kind of like, oh, well, whatever. Um, sometimes I guess we can get like that too. But you say you hear the 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 dinging of the of the the postman or postwoman or mail carrier, whatever, when when they deliver the mail. And, you know, we can kind of uh-huh. go through it. And, you know, for me, it's sometimes it's always still exciting, but, you know, you see work permits, work permits, work permits, you're like, okay, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, and I remember one day, not too long ago, um, a woman came in and she had gotten her, just her work permit for her U visa. So she doesn't have the, the whole U visa yet. She just have what they call deferred action. And the woman's been in the country for probably 20 years or so. And she came in and she's like, oh, I'm here to pick up my work permit. So my assistant is giving it to her. And, and I was walking by and I said, oh, hi, how are you? Like, just make sure everything is correct on your card. That They have your, your name spelled right. They have the right date of birth. They have the right sex listed. Um, you know, everything is, is okay. And she's like, oh, it's great. I'm like, oh, okay, great. You know, and then... I noticed that she was like crying and she came and gave me a big hug. And, you know, I was, for me, that was kind of like, like a ministerial function of like, okay, just, you know, make sure everything's okay. Um, was such right. a big deal for her. And she was so emotional. And um, I don't expect that from all my clients. Like usually I, I would expect them to bow down and, and thank and kiss my ring. But the crying part. Right was really a nice touch. It was really nice touch. It was really sweet of her. <laughs> no, but I mean, so sometimes I think we take, we take stuff for granted as, as well. Right. Right. Yeah. And people, one thing that we don't talk about that much, uh, but it's so true is if you're undocumented, uh, you find a way to work in this country, but so many people get trapped in, really shitty circumstances or jobs um, because they know how hard it might be to go somewhere else with uh, fake papers. Um, You know, maybe they've been working at the same place. People get really trapped in these jobs that are not great and they're not necessarily explicitly threatened or like, Oh, you know, I'm going to call immigration on you or anything like that. But just knowing that the market is going to be tight if they, you know, try and find a job somewhere else uh, without papers. And they've been able to get away with it at wherever they're working. And they're not able to, um, you know, just test the market like you would normally, right? Oh, this pays, place pays a little bit better. I'm going to go over there. Um, they have no bargaining power really in, in their workplace. So just a simple work permit. It's not like they weren't working before, but um, it changes so much the the, the power dynamic with the uh, the workers. So that's that's awesome. Um, yeah. Do you have any more? I think I'm kind of. I had one other listener email, but apparently that that makes me. Well, look I have bad. one I from uh, Twitter from uh, Jay Hartle, and mm-hmm. just they're one of the immigration attorneys on Twitter. Um, um, he or she. Uh, so they worked on a separated, uh, um, a family that was separated by our, our system. They said there were two motions to reopen. The second one, they had to get an emergency stay. Uh, petition for review from Matthew Hoppick, a uh, friend of the show, I got an emergency stay. Three detention facility transfers, a writ of habeas corpus um, done by Fi, um, Fi Nyung, um in Atlanta. Uh, it's all started in Alabama, but essentially a lot of attorneys working really hard to get, um, a Congolese father who was separated from his family at the U S Mexican border, um, after they had asked for asylum together. So, you know, it turns out okay, but you can imagine, you know, they came up to get asylum at the, at the U S Mexican border. They were all separated and just the amount of legal muscle and effort it took, you know, just to get them together so they can seek protection 
in this country is amazing. And, um, you know, I, we're keeping this a positive show. So um, we won't go into too much as to why it shouldn't really take that much effort um, <laughs> for these things. But, you know, there are a lot of really, really good uh, people out there who are doing really positive work. And I, and I think that's what we can, yeah. um, you know, kind of feel good about going forward, even though we, you know, there is this darkness that is kind of creeping over us. Um, and we have a lot of people right. pushing back on it. And I wouldn't say it's creeping. I'd say it's this more is, like this tap is a, like on <laughs> This is a positive platforms. show. We're trying to keep it positive. <laughs> right. So let me just... <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll finish up uh, unless you've got a couple more, but I, I got a really nice letter uh, this weekend and I was feeling real good about myself. It was somebody writing to say I did uh, good on a case. And I was like, yeah, you know, uh, I guess maybe I'm a pretty good lawyer. I was feeling like really uh, feeling myself. And then I realized like the work I did on that case was maybe 25% mine. And then the rest of it was, uh, Luis Cortez, Alma David, and Stephen Manning, who I had, who all voluntarily, like without even a note of complaining, uh, volunteered their time to help me with this case. Um, and I remember actually the day before the oral argument, um, I met with Stephen Manning on a Sunday <laughs> in his office in Portland, uh, so that he could help me, um, sort of prepare for the the oral argument. And in fact, um, he convinced me uh, to completely change up the way that I was going to do the argument. Did he um, tell you stand up? And he ends up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you going to wear that? Um, yeah, I, you know, I was going to go swimming afterwards. So I thought I'd just do the oral argument in my swim trunks. Well, and well, he was it's like, a, it's the ninth circuit though. It's an, <laughs> exactly. That's what I thought. But, uh, no, but he, uh, he had some really incredible feedback. So the point is like, uh, we have just some of the smartest people and, uh, uh, really talented, creative legal minds, not just uh, working in this field, but um, being extremely generous with their time and, and not that people should uh, take advantage of that, which I think I probably do sometimes. But um, so uh, that's another positive aspect when you're feeling uh, alone in all of this or like, <laughs> you know, things are hopeless or, or whatever, you can look around and find um, hundreds of uh, really good, probably thousands. I don't know. Should we go thousands? Thousands of talented, dedicated people hundreds, who are hundreds. there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's keep it in the hundreds, right? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but you, get but you away. did that but argument, a, right? I mean, so, so what Steven's talking well, no, about is look, he got a letter from the Ninth Circuit from one of the judges saying that he did an excellent job in his advocacy before them on this one case he's talking about. So you you right. did that no, argument. Trust so I think you should feel good about yourself. I oh trust me, I feel great about myself. <laughs> okay, well let me rephrase that. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I should feel a de you know the right amount. But the point is like, um, that I got a an uh, a lot of help, and, and you know, even from, I think you might've, uh, proofread my brief and, you know, other people who are willing to just, you know, chip in and, and help out with that stuff. It's, it's pretty incredible. I don't know. And maybe cause I haven't practiced any other, any other area of law. So I'd be interested to, to find out if the personal injury world is, is the same way. If, if I could call one of the personal injury attorneys in town and be like, Hey, you know, I, I need you to really help me with this oral argument and, and, uh, you know, no, I think lots of we're I, kind I of know. unique. Maybe they're like the criminal defense attorney bar. Cause they have like, we all in immigration, we have a common enemy, so to speak. Right. Um, so personal injury, I think they, they kind of go against each other, but who knows? I mean, I don't know. Mm. 
But, you know, in, in a year or so from now, there might not be any more immigration. So we might have to find out. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you practice a uh, personal injury and you're hiring, please uh, reach out to Matthew or I. Um, no, just kidding. We're, uh, we're planning on fleeing the country and opening a, um, a cafe in, yeah. in Belize. With a surf shop. We don't know anything about yeah. surfing. Do you know how to surf? Do you know anything about surfing? I'm, I'm assuming you don't. No. No, I don't. We don't, Not the we first don't thing, really anything but, about uh, law either. Like what we're doing. Exactly. Uh, if, if I could carve 10 years out of uh, immigration law somehow as a lawyer, then I think I could probably run so a anyway, surf So anyway, our, so our message for this show is that there are positive things happening. There are great people mm-hmm. doing these things, and I and I have I have a bunch of other um, um, uh, stories that people sent me. And I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them, um, but yeah, there are still good things happening. It's not all uh, dark and bleak out there. Right. And if we, uh, you know, I think the other thing to, to keep in mind is if we ever want to correct the course <laughs> that we're on, it's going to take uh, these same people, you know, working double time, overtime, and, and, and bringing new people into the fold. So, uh, yeah, uh, Matthew, it was a fun year. I think we did it. We did a good job. You know, we got a producer this year. Um, he, he does a lot of really good work. We can be thankful for that. So is this going to be our last show of the year or are you going on so, vacation yeah. or then, take a little break? Well, we were going to, uh, go down and see family, but, uh, we've been overcome by illness. So we'll probably just uh-huh. hunker down, but, yeah. uh, Yeah. Merry Christmas, oh, well, by the way, well, and and oh, that's we should. right, that's right, that's right. We, we can should say give that credit. again. Merry we Christmas. We can say it again. No, Merry Christ. You know, uh, that's how. That's how you really stick it to it's the not lids. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Emphasize the Christ. Yes. Christ mass. Christ mass. Christ. Like more. We need more Christ. Christ. And happy right. holidays. Um, And happy holidays. Did you see? (laughs) We'll talk about it afterwards. Good night. All right. Have a good one.